Even though you can outfly me, you can be my wing pony anytime. Aw, <laughs> and you can be mine. Uh, yeah. Will you two just kiss already? Hey everyone, Jordan Lego Comics here, and before we begin, let me ask you this. You know how Star Wars Episode Two was a big mess, but it gave us the awesome Clone Wars cartoon? Well, if Newbie Dash is Star Wars Episode Two, then Top Bolt is the Clone Wars. Now, let me clarify that I don't think Newbie Dash is a bad episode. Personally, I thought it was okay. And besides, I'd rather sit through the whole sequence of Rainbow Dash imitating the rest of the main seven, except Starlight, than listen to young Darth Vader talk about how much he doesn't like sand. Ugh. I bring this up because with Rainbow Dash officially a Wonderbolt, thank you, this opened up all kinds of opportunities. And Top Bolt was one of those opportunities. Now let's take a look, starting with... So in this episode, Rainbow Dash and Twilight are summoned by the Friendship Map to Wonderbolt Academy, where we find out that one of the cadets, Vapor Trail, has actually been helping her friend, Sky Stinger, and has been hiding the truth from him about it. Rainbow and Twilight need to find a way to fix their friendship problem while also helping them get into the Academy and follow their dreams of joining the Wonderbolts. Okay, this is a great episode just for the setup alone. Not only is it a good friendship map episode, but it's also an episode that serves as a callback to both Testing Testing 123 and Wonderbolt Academy, the very first episode I ever watched. In terms of a friendship map episode, this serves as good character development, not just for our main characters, but also the new characters. Speaking of which... <laughs> First, let's take a look at my favorite character of the show, Rainbow Dash. Now, it definitely makes sense for the friendship map to call her. After all, she has been through all the tests and trials at the Academy. Helping out Wonderbolt Cadets serves as an opportunity for her to pass down her knowledge and experience from one generation of Wonderbolts to the next. I also like the few moments where Rainbow Dash's character has adjusted since Newbie Dash. She's gotten used to being called Crash, further shown in the comics, even though they aren't canon, <laughs> and she sees herself on the same level as the other Wonderbolts. Twilight is also a good choice because by this point in the show, she's a teacher. First, she did help Rainbow Dash pass her exam to get into the Wonderbolt reserves, which eventually got her into the Wonderbolts. Second, as I mentioned back in my To Wear and Back Again video, Twilight is Starlight Glimmer's mentor, who thank goodness has a cameo in this episode. <laughs> Sorry, I got a little carried away there for a moment. And finally, Twilight's always been a bookworm and a straight-A student. With her expertise in academics, she's perfect for being a teacher at the Academy. So how well do these two work together? Very well. While they do have differing opinions on how to solve the friendship problem, they don't argue about it. They do discuss and debate it, but it's done in a way that two friends would, in a civilized manner. What's also nice about this friendship map episode is that they give each of their methods a try first instead of just arguing about it. By the third act, Twilight and Rainbow Dash realize that neither of their methods are good enough alone, that both methods work well together. That's something I will continue to talk about later on. But for now, let's get to the cutest class of, uh, yeah, I mean friends of this episode, Sky Stinger and Vapor Trail. Let's start with Sky Stinger, and before we start hating on him, let me say this. He's not as bad as Zephyr Breeze. The Sorin Dash shippers send their regards. <coughs> Fluttershy is not gonna be happy. But anyways, the reason why I say Sky is better than Zephyr is that while yes, he's arrogant and boastful, and Harley has the talent to back it up the same way Rainbow does, he does show that he cares and is concerned for Vapor Trail, as he does ask Twy and RD to help her. And yes, he is somewhat lazy, but he's lazy because he's overconfident. Zephyr Breeze is just lazy for the sake of laziness. And unlike Zephyr, Sky is somewhat sympathetic. As Vapor explained, Sky was the youngest in a large family and wasn't given as much attention as he wanted, and from the looks of it, needed. Yes, Zephyr Breeze is Flourishai's brother, but that's the only reason why he's given a boost towards the end. Other than that, I did not feel that much sympathy for him. 
For Sky, he wanted a chance to stand out, but he was overshadowed by his older siblings. With the Vapor Trail, Sky didn't feel alone. He felt like he could stand out. Now yeah, when Vapor Trail tells the truth, he does overreact. Though I can understand that and I will explain why in a bit. I will say that I was a bit bothered by how they wrote the dialogue, though it's still better than anything George Lucas wrote for the prequels. Which, I will spare you. Still, Sky does regain his confidence when he actually practices before the trials. Sky is not natural Wonderbolt material, but he still has the potential. He just needs practice, just as much as Twilight needed practice in terms of friendship. Now, she's the princess of friendship. So you're saying I can be the princess of flying? Now, Vapor Trail is at the opposite end of the spectrum. She's shy and doesn't have a lot of confidence. But unlike Sky, she has the natural skills. And she does genuinely care about Sky as she wants to be with him. I also like how she gains confidence in herself when she trains with Rainbow Dash, to the point where she wants to be a Wonder Bowl for herself and not just simply to be with Sky. For the third act, I like how after they forgave each other, Sky and Vapor helped each other train for the solo trials. Vapor boosts Sky's confidence while Sky instructs Vapor. Which reminds me. The message is another thing I like about this episode, how they emphasize the importance between confidence and constructive criticism. Now, in my personal opinion, there needs to be a balance between confidence and criticism. When one is too confident and doesn't have enough constructive criticism, then one can start to become overconfident. I did some research on the subject, and here's what I came across. <clears throat> The overconfidence effect is a cognitive bias in which someone believes subjectively that his or her knowledge or judgment is better or more reliable than it objectively is. As shown during his training with Twilight, Sky was in the overconfidence effect. He thought that he didn't need basic training when clearly he did. And when Vapor Trail blurts out the truth, it's like an atomic bomb on his confidence. For one to be in the overconfidence effect and then be given criticism, whether it's constructive or deconstructive, can hurt one's confidence to the point where he or she loses it almost entirely. Wow, Luke Skywalker was right. Overconfidence is a weakness. As a content creator, I've sometimes had trouble taking criticism, whether it was from my parents, my teachers, or my peers. Heck, when writing the script for Starlight's heroic journey, I was hesitant to seek constructive feedback. But the thing is, I needed that constructive feedback. Without it, the video would have been twice as long, thus too long. And I admit, sometimes I still struggle with taking criticism. One thing I'm still learning is that you can respond to criticism in two ways. One, you can let it bring you down and give up. Or two, you can use that criticism as a guide to improve your skills. That's why I can relate to this episode on a personal level. I understand that not everyone likes this episode, and that's fine. Everyone's entitled to their own opinions. For me, this is an episode that I really enjoyed. There are well-written characters and interactions, and while there was just a bit of clunky dialogue, it didn't ruin the episode for me. There were also some good moments of humor, even though some were at Rainbow Dash's expense. Dash! I've been looking all over for you. Wonderbolt emergency. We gotta get back to HQ. You gotta be kidding me! I was just there! <sighs> <laughs> now, on my new awesome meter, I am going to give Top Bold a great rating. This is one of the highlights of Season 6 for me, and as I mentioned at the beginning, we have Newbie Dash to thank for this episode. And I am really hoping that we get to see more of Rainbow Dash as a Wonderbolt in the future. Till then, I'm Jordan Lego Comics, God bless, and I'll see you all next time.